So I've been searching for a way for quite a while on how to set up a automated podcast download solution system or whatever you want to call it. You could call it your podcast butler, if you will. But there's really no perfect solution out there. And I did end up building a system, which I think is pretty darn good. And it uses all 100% free and or open source software. I'm going to show you guys how to install everything, how to do everything, so you can set up your very own automated podcast system. Let's get started. It'll be fun. So the first thing I want to do is list everything off for the project to make this work. So you can decide if this is for you, but if anything at all, it's just going to be a great, fun, free project. So why not just give it a shot? Starting off, you're going to need either a Synology, which isn't free, or you can use Exponology, which is free. And I have a video showing how to install that on Proxmox. It's pretty easy to do. So you can use Exponology if you don't have a Synology. The next thing we're going to do is make sure we have Docker installed on our Synology or Exponology. And then I'll be using AirSonic to serve up the files and do the downloading for the podcast. So there's our short list of things that you'll need. And also keep in mind that this can be done on a regular installation of Linux and Docker as well. It's pretty simple to do. But with Synology, I do have a fan base that loves Synology. So... I'll be doing this example on Exponology. So I'm gonna jump right in and get started on Exponology. So like I just said, I'm using a Exponology copy, which is a DS918 with a little over two gigs of RAM. And you can also see the specs right here in the control panel. This is a fresh copy of Exponology. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have Docker installed. So if you don't have Docker installed, you can go to the package center, search for Docker. And instead of saying open here, it will say install. Go ahead and install it. And since I already installed it, I'm going to go ahead and click open and we'll close the package center because I don't need that right now. We'll go to the registry and we want to search for AirSonic. So I'm moving right along here, try to keep up here. The image we want is Linux server slash AirSonic. And it says an AirSonic container brought to you by Linux server.io. So let's double click, make sure we choose the latest tag. So that is already in there by default. Then hit select and let it download. And when it's done, you should get a message up here that pops up and says that it's done downloading, but you can also see the progress here on the right side. It can be kind of slow depending on your internet connection, but I'll cut to the chase and let this download and we'll get back with you guys in a second. Okay, so we're finished downloading. Let's go ahead and install this puppy and I'm just gonna call it AirSonic to make it look cleaner. We'll go to advanced settings here, enable auto start. And the volumes is where things can get a little tricky because you want to mount your config and we're not going to be using this for music. It'll be just for podcasts. So all I'm going to be mounting is the podcast folder in this one. So if we go ahead and take a look at the Docker hub page for the Linux server image of AirSonic, it says right here that you just want to mount it to just slash podcast. So that seems pretty simple. So we'll start with that one to mount that. We'll go back, we'll add a folder, under Docker, I'm gonna create one called AirSonic. Create that. And then inside the AirSonic folder, I'm going to create another one called Podcasts. And that's the one we're gonna select. And we're gonna mount that to, you guessed it, Podcasts. So we'll go ahead and add that. Then we gotta do the config folder, which is just going to be within AirSonic and we'll call it config. Are you keeping up? Hope so. We'll select this and we'll mount that to, you guessed it, config. Before we go any further and for the sake of your sanity, I'm going to make sure that you guys go ahead and set some permissions really quick for the folders that we just created. So open file station, which is this little icon right here. And then go to your AirSonic and right click it and go to properties under permission. We're going to create a new one and we will do system because otherwise the system won't know. It needs to have read and write access. Click OK. It needs read access for the thumbnails and write access so it can send the podcast to those folders. And then click apply this folder to subfolders and files. Click OK. And that part's done. Now for our port settings, let's go ahead and see what they have for the port. They have it on 4040, so we'll go ahead and just copy that and we'll put it on 4042 since this is fresh. We don't have anything else using port 4040, so let's go ahead and stick it on 4040. If you want to put it on something else, you can put it on an 80, 
80 something port if you'd like to as well. But this will work for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything else. Looks good and we should be good to go. And let's click apply. And then we will click next and run this container after wizard is finished. Like always, piece of cake. Let's spin it up and get it going. All right. So once we do that, we go back to the container, make sure everything's running. I like to look at the logs instead of just jumping into the URL. It says everything's done, starting services. So if we load this up on 4040, let's copy this. Go to 4040, 4040. All right, it's not loading yet. Let's take a look again and refresh. Okay, we still have some services uh, being run here. We'll give it a couple more minutes. Oh, it's creating, yeah, it's it's definitely creating some more uh, stuff here. So let's go ahead and check out our AirSonic and make sure files are coming in. Okay, we do have files coming in, so things are being installed. You did see the CPU jump up there a little bit. That usually means something's working. It did jump back down. That's a good indicator that we should be able to load AirSonic. Hey, hey, we have it. Uh, the username and password. What is the default username and password? I'm just gonna go ahead and take a shot in the dark and say it's admin admin. And it is. So admin admin it is. And this is Air Sonic. So let's get this set up for podcasts and go on to the next step. What's really cool about AirSonic is when you install it and the first thing you see is this getting started section here. I'm gonna forget about the administration password. I know that's not really the greatest thing to do, but since this is just a local installation, I'm not, I'm not going to expose it to the internet. Uh, I'm just going to jump into setting up my media folders. Even though we did mount a podcast folder when we installed AirSonic, you still have to do it in the settings here. So go ahead and do a podcast. I can't talk and type at the same time, by the way. And then it's all lowercase slash podcast because that's what we did in the setup. Uh, we're not using this for music, so I'm gonna go ahead and untick enabled on this specific folder. And then we'll just click save. And it will have access to the podcast directory here on the Synology, which is here. How do we actually set up the RSS feeds and get the podcast coming in? This is the next step, and this is probably the step that you guys have been wondering. And to be 100% honest with you, the hardest part about this is actually finding the RSS feeds for the podcast that you like. It's not that hard once you learn how to do it, though. So let's dive in and get that started. Before we run off and search for podcasts that we want to download automatically, we need to go to the podcast section with an AirSonic and change a couple settings. You don't really have to change anything here, but... You do have to take note of these settings here in the podcast section. Do you want to check for new episodes every day, every hour, every week, or manually? I mean, why would you want to do it manually? Because this whole thing's about automation, right? So I have my personal uh, system set up for every hour, but I think every day is a good way to start. Uh, that way it just checks once a day. I'm not sure what time, but it does do it once a day. You can uh, also select how many episodes you want to keep. So I do all episodes because I like to hoard. So that's just me. One thing to note about the keeping section is that if you check any of the numbered ones, it'll delete any after than that. So say you, you say last 50 episodes, it'll keep up to 50 episodes and then it will delete any of the older ones prior to that. So if you don't want any to be deleted, make sure you select all episodes. When new episodes are available, download the most recent one. Uh, that seems like pretty much a good idea to me. And it will be saved in the slash podcast folder, which is right here on our Synology NAS. So let's go ahead and click save on that if you made any changes. And now we will dive in to the podcast section, which is right here. Hey, look, you can add an RSS link. So now we have to go find an RSS link. What podcast should we start with? Hmm, let me think about this for a second. Ah, I know, the perfect one, self-hosted, of course. Yes, here it is right here, actually. No, all kidding aside, I already knew I was gonna do this one because they actually have a RSS link already set up for you right here, makes things easy. And what better podcast to use for a self-hosted oriented channel. So we're gonna grab that link and we're going to toss it right in here. And we're going to click, okay, so here we are. 
This is our first podcast added, and there is no thumbnail yet. Sometimes it takes quite a while for these thumbnails to propagate for whatever reason. It may have to do with the permissions and it may need to scan these folders. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but if we go into this, earlier I had issues with permissions, but I went back and fixed that already, so you guys don't need to worry about that. So if I go ahead and tick these two and click download selected, and let me hit check new episodes, it's at 50%. But also you can check these like this if you want to download them. It won't download the latest episodes unless you tell it to, but any episode after this is when the automation will kick in. So just keep that in mind. You can click download selected. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, you can see these three. It, it's doing three at a time. And then I'll show you what it looks like here on the Synology. So those are completed. All right, so it's gonna complete those. And then if you go back to our Synology, or in this case, our Xpanology, you can see our CPUs cranked up a little bit. But well, that's because the system's downloading files. And in our podcast folder, we see a self-hosted folder with all of the episodes and the cover image for that specific podcast. So if I was to open this up, this is what that thumbnail looks like. A really cool square self-hosted image that'll eventually show up in our AirSonic. And I can close that. By the way, when I said that it will only download the episodes after this earlier, I meant after the addition of this specific podcast. So in our settings, if you wanted all of these to download, back in our settings, you could do download. Right now we have the most recent one, so it would have only downloaded the latest episode. You could do the last three all the way up to the last 10 or even all. So if you wanted all of those, you can go back into your settings and change it so it downloads all the episodes. And then after that, it'll download any future episode automatically. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fill this out a little bit more and add more podcasts to it. And I'll get back with you guys when it looks a little more full. So I'm going to do that right now and I'll get back. All right, what other podcast do I want? Do we have any Linux? I already added the Floss one. I can do TwitBits, I guess. Let's grab the RSS. Copy that. Take it back into AirSonic. Add it there, click OK, and we should be able to refresh that. There it is. It's downloading the first one like I told it to. Oh, hey, guys, just uh, adding more stuff in here. As you can see, I've got quite a few podcasts in here already set up. You can see how many episodes are here, and it even shows you here on the podcast page what your latest episodes are and the time and date they downloaded. So if you want to know when your latest episodes hit, just go to this page and here they are. We can see the six podcasts that we have here at the top. So let's go ahead and see if it looks like that on our Synology as well. And we'll check and see if our media files are where they need to be in our podcasts. Look at that. We have beautiful folders all organized within the podcast directory right here on our Xpanology, aka Synology. So if you have a Synology, more power to you. Xpanology will definitely do the trick as you can see here. So that's it. Like I said earlier, finding your podcast and adding them into the system takes the longest. And that's probably the most boring part of the whole process. But once you get that all set up, it's automated out of the box. So all of the new episodes should automatically download into your Synology system or Xpanology, whatever you're using. And then the next step is to figure out how to play them back. And that is what part two is going to be about. How to play back your podcast files what are your options? Can you use Plex? Maybe MB? Maybe Jellyfin? What mobile apps can you use? Subsonic? There's quite a few of them out there that are compatible with AirSonic. We'll go over all that and more in the next video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Was this helpful for you? Shoot me a like on the video. Are you subscribed? If not, consider subscribing. It would help me out a lot and I would appreciate that. And so you don't miss that next video. Stay tuned. And I'll see you guys in the next one.